and welcome to our Unreal Engine live stream. I'm your host, Amanda Bott. With me, I have Jay Hospital, a Hello. lead animator and fellow community manager, Tim Slaker. So thank you all for joining us once again. I know there's Absolutely. a lot of questions around animation. I feel like we've been here before. Maybe. Maybe three times. Uh, so before we, before we dive in, mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to do a brief trailer for the Forge Arena. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Arena is now in their beta by the Freezing Raccoon team and will be doing a key giveaway during the stream. So if that interests you, close your boat, try to snag one of those keys, we'll be dropping it in chat. That's yeah. just an awesome name, the Frozen Raccoon. <laughs> oh, Freezing, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, that's poor raccoon, but man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so keep an eye out for that. Oh, like it's this one right here. on our site. Uh, and Jake, feel free to take it away. Awesome. All right. Well, it's good to be back to cover uh, more Paragon animation stuff. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to cover Melee Twist. It's a concept we use for upper body Melee. I'll show you guys some additive stuff, like how we use for Hit Reacts. Um, I am going to cover, there's a topic that I covered last time I was on that I kind of want to show a better way I found out. Um, but first of all, I want to tell you guys that we, we definitely pass around all the videos we see of you creating content with Paragon Assets. We, we love passing them around. Anyway, we wanted to show a couple of our favorite today, just to let you guys see what people can do with this. Uh, the first one we're going to show is Bounty Part 2. It's by REC, or Rec, uh, Cinematic Gaming. This looks awesome. Um, so what's really cool with this is they used all of our gameplay animations, put them in sequencer, and built a really cool sequence. Um, but those were all in-game assets. Uh, we will probably do a stream at some point to show how to set up sequencer. I think that would be a good topic to cover mm -hmm. for those who have not used sequencer. Um, and the second one is actually someone who took our gameplay assets but added a So the video we just saw was Paragon Brawl, and that was that's a case where someone started with some of our animations and, and our models and took it really far and created a really cool game with uh, some pretty cool like time, slow down, slow-mo, and, and stuff. Um, so anyway, yeah, that's what can be done. So if you guys have your own projects, please send them to us. We'd love to see them and showcase them on, on our stream. So let's see. So the first thing I want to cover today on the animation stuff is, let's see. Today, I'm going to be working with uh, Sarath. And right now, my starting point is her basic, uh, basically, if you had retargeted Shinbi over to her. Um, or you can actually work along with me with Shinbi. All this stuff will carry over to Shinbi as well. Uh, but one thing I covered last time I was on was how to get the direction for a stop. Like when you're strafing and we want to get the direction when you stop moving and pin a number down. 
of what direction you are, and then we would tell that direction to feed into one of your four directional stops. What I told you guys last time was, you know, as I was playing through it, was a little bit um, incorrect. Sometimes it would give me a, a correct number. So if I'm running right and I would stop, it would set direction stop to 90. Sometimes it'd be random, like 40 or 45. So I set up a much easier way to do this. So if you guys did watch part two, use this instead of what I showed you on part two. Uh, <laughs> so like I said, at any given time, we're setting direction for a character. When you're doing your controller, we're getting a direction. Whenever you stop a character running, that direction is no longer being set. And so we, like I said, we had a problem of not uh, getting that number. So what I want to do So we're is not storing that number once they stop? Yeah, like when you stop, there's no more number. Right, and nothing is generating. And based on when you stopped, it could just kind of give you any number. You gotcha. Know, um, so we're just getting random results in our blend space. So what we want to do is set a new variable. And let's call, let's call this uh, stop direction. This is super simple. OK, so at this point, we're setting direction. And as of now, we're always going to be setting a stop direction as well. So what we want is to kind of put a branch in here. So let's do a branch. And in this case, I'm going to actually uh, just to play it safe, I'm not going to feed that directly. I'm going to take direction and put it here. Um, so basically, I need a condition to set the stop direction. So what I'm going to do here is basically take is accelerating and plug that in to my true condition. So now all I'm saying is if you're running in any direction, if you're accelerating at all, we're always going to be updating the stop direction. The minute you take your hand off the controller, your stop direction is now set. This is going to give you much more accurate results uh, when we play. So let me, I'll, I'll show you guys real fast what this looks like. Um, best way is basically print, I'm going to print string. And let's feed this, this value into the actual string that's being printed. So you guys can see the exact numbers that are going to display. I need to <laughs> okay stop direction okay yep there we go okay so as you can see the numbers right now I'm just showing the debug numbers and when she stops that is the direction she stopped ba essentially negative 90 if she went to the right we got 90 mm -hmm. if she's going forward it's at essentially zero, and back is 180. either 180 yeah. or negative 180. Um, so yeah, just wanted to correct that for you guys. All right, so now back to the new stuff. Um, we are going to do strafe. Uh, well, let me, let me show you guys what our initial problem we're trying to solve is first. Let me just go ahead and delete this stuff right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey. All right, so... When you run around, right now we're basically playing melee on upper body only. Let me go to full screen here. So as you guys, when, I, when, I, when I'm standing still and I play a melee, it's full body. But when I run right now, the logic says basically just play on spine one and up. And you get this really nasty oh, yeah. break That's in her spine. That would probably kill somebody. <laughs> and it just doesn't look good. It looks very kind of like early 2000s gamey. Uh, but the thing is, a lot of games still use this because it's very responsive you know, when you're playing. It's very responsive to the locomotion, and designers like it. So on Paragon, we were asked to have a melee system this way. And we told them, this would look ugly. And they said, well, find a way to make it not look <laughs> so, so ugly. So it looks ugly. We'll find a way to <laughs> fix it. Find a way to fix it. And that's, that's game development. And so basically, what we want to do uh, this. Issue is simple. It's kind of a little bit complicated to explain. 
so basically what we want to do is we have a way to control the upper body, but what you need is a way to control the lower body, hips to turn with the upper body. And we don't want to make custom assets for that either. We want to use, you know, when you're making a game, you kind of want to use what you already have as much as you can. The cool thing is, is we have strafe animations already. So if we have a, a jog left, let's zoom into a jog left. So here's her jog left animation. The cool thing is, though, what if you just rotate her whole self, like rotate her root to where she's running forward, well, now you have a run left forward animation, if that makes sense. So uh, an angle. So we're basically taking strafes and then orienting them. We're, we're rotating strafes, so they're actually still running forward. But now she's running with her left side forward or her right side forward. So let me try. Let me show another way to show this. So um, you're saying, like, at this point, we want to shift her. Yeah, so you her body's facing forward, but the motion remains the same. Yeah, you want her to be running north. But now she could be running north, running backwards, right, or left. Gotcha. Uh, so I made a kind of an example blend space to show what I'm getting at. So let's say you're playing the game, and you still right now she's running towards camera, and we still want her to run towards camera. But we could use the strafes, and now she's running. You know, she's running backwards towards camera. She's running left towards camera, forward towards camera. She's running right towards camera and back. And these are just the strafe animations. I'm rotating them. The main thing we want is I'm going to zoom here just so you guys don't look at the upper body. Just look at the hips. But as you can see, I now have a way to rotate hips. Oh. Think, of, think of it that way. The feet are always moving in the same direction. And now I also have a way for the hips to rotate. That's the fundamental basics of, of what we're starting with is a way for hips can rotate with the spine. The way to do this, this is just an example file where I straight up just rotated our strafe animations. We want to do this real time. So what you can do is on the anim graph, let's go ahead. And in the foot IK controls category, I'm just going to call this like a modifier controls now because we've kind of moved on. We've moved beyond just foot controls in this, this box here. So let's call it modifier. And what we want to do is there is a rotate root node in, in here. So we can load that up. Rotate root bone. And we're going to feed full body cache pose into this base pose. And now, so if I were to put a yaw, let's say a yaw of 90 on the rotate root bone, and let's play the game. Let's compile and play. You can see now that she's going to be turned uh, clockwise 90 degrees to the right, mm -hmm. just because we're modifying that root bone. All right, so let's go back here. So what we want to do is we want to update this yaw curve based on using our animation. So like say when she rears back for melee, and her spine twists to the right 90, we want those hips to go with the spine. And we want to control this dynamically. So you don't have just a, a static, we're moving at 90 degrees every turn. Right. And you know, right now I just typed in a static number to show you what, what is being right. affected. Um, so let's go to the event graph. And let's go ahead and create a melee twist variable. Um, let's do. Every time I hear that, I think it should be a dance. A melee, twi a melee there twist. Sh there should be a melee twist. That's the end of the stream. Mm. Um, actually, let's do this. So we'll call this melee twist. <laughs> I hear a song in my head though. <laughs> twist and. And then let's go back to the anim anim graph and. And for this, we can just plug that melee twist in to yaw. OK, so right now, nothing is feeding the melee twist. We're actually just back back to where we were, because over, over here in the event graph, melee twist is just set to 0. So now we need something constantly feeding in this melee twist. So let's go 
I want to show you one of her melee animations. And we actually, you guys will see this in our animation content, that a lot of these characters in their melee animations have uh, what's called a melee twist. So if we load up primary attack A, let's open that asset. You will see that she has a melee twist curve already built in. And the way we got this, this particular curve, was the animator took the, the hip rotation and basically duplicated that curve and put it on a, a custom curve melee twist. And if you look at the values here, it looks like here there's like 64 degrees. It looks like her hips rotate about 64 degrees up here, and they're counter-rotated. I can't quite see the number here. The value is about negative 53 yeah. and something, negative 54. So we're going to use this curve. Uh, all the animations have this melee twist curve are the ones that use it. So let's go back to Blueprint, and let's go ahead and get curve value. Uh, let's see. Curve, get curve value. And that is what's going to drive our melee twist. Do you need to do anything to the initial animations to start using them in the blend spaces for things like this where you're using them kind of different than what they were originally intended? In this case, melee twist works with the melee twist works the same the way I have it set up and way the way Paragon had it set okay. up set up the same. Uh, what I am showing you guys today is definitely I'm doing a couple things assuming you have strafing set up in place. So if you don't have strafing set up, just watch video number two where I show you how to set up strafing. All right, so now we have melee twist. We're reading this curve from the animation assets. It's feeding into the melee twist. And we're going to get a result here. It's not going to be the result we want. But you guys can you guys see now that her hips are turning with the animation. Far more. Right, they're falling. But see, now her the feet... Yeah, I was going to say, her feet seem a little... The feet are going all over, all over the place. They're not, they're not going forward. Um, Unless she was on ice. This would make yeah, sense. she's on ice or zero gravity or something. Yeah. So this is what we want to fix up next. So think about this. Right now, she's turning here because we rotated the root. So now we need to counter... We need to counter-rotate her melee twist on her actual strafe blend space. It's basically now we're saying rotate the root, say 64 degrees, mm -hmm. but we want her blend space to know that she actually needs to run left negative 64 degrees to, to counter that. So we're going to use this melee twist value again. So let's That's go. That's negative 64 based on direction, right? Uh-huh. Negative 64 based on direction. So let's go to her locomotion state machine. And let's go to her run. OK, so right now we have direction. And the direction is always feeding in, assuming she's always facing forward. Well, now we're rotating a route at any given time. So we need to go ahead and, and offset this. So we'll create a delta. So let's get the melee twist value. And then we want to subtract the melee twist, so we can. So we could actually just do minus. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now, if we go back and play, we're going to get her feet are now forward. And if you see, like, oh, on that one animation, let's do Let's go slow-mo. So, so we're not done yet. There's still definitely some, some issues we're going to see. But let's go and play the slow-mo. <laughs> so especially when she swings to the left, you can see how she, you know, her hips turn to the left, and her feet are also rotating to the direction uh, they need to go. Or when she turns back from the swing, or are you turning her? Because it looks like her feet are... Okay. So let's see. So right now we got basically it's a literal one to one curve of the, the rotation from her hips are now driving her blend space to counter. Let me counter her swinging. So let's get 
The problem now we're seeing is, let me play again. The problem we're seeing now is now she's getting double rotation when she's idle, meaning we don't, we do not want to update melee twist when, when she's idle. So let's go back here. Um, the other thing we need to do is her aim offset. Uh, let, me, let me play this one more time. I want to make sure. So if you see here, see how she overshoots her, uh, when she swings to the right, she's really swinging, aiming to the right. It's because her aim offset is also assuming there's no root motion. So we also need to counter her aim offset as well. So we countered her strafe. We also need to counter the, how she looks right and left. So oh, we're gonna she's do, swinging. Yeah, because right now gotcha. the, the curve is going to make her actually aim like double the value to the right. So because theoretically, she would miss her hit because she missed her hit, and it's also just twisting her a lot. So let's for this the aim offset right now is early in the graph, so it's actually getting stomped on. So we're doing an aim offset pose up here, but then once we play our montage, which is a full body pose, it's actually now going to ignore this aim offset. So what we need to do is move this aim offset later in the graph. This needs to happen after her melee motion. So all I'm going to do is, let's just put this back down here at the end of the graph. And let's just for now move this right here. And we need to do the exact same thing with the yaw, with her aim offset yaw. We want to go ahead and back out the melee twist that we're doing. So once again, we'll get melee twist. We're going to subtract melee twist from yaw and feed that into the yaw. So now she's swinging forward again. She's not, you know, swinging earlier she's right. really, really twisting to her right. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we still have the problem of we're, we're reading melee to us while she's idling. And that's easy to fix. Basically, we just say don't. Don't read it. Don't, <laughs> don't do <laughs> melee twist if, if there's no acceleration. Uh, there's probably several ways to solve it. Um, let's just for this, let's just say... Uh, we could use that branch logic here. Let's just do this, where we say if she's moving, if she's moving, go ahead and do melee twist. Um, condition is accelerating. Let's see if this works. Now, is is she considered accelerating if you're rotating her on zero x? Actually, you're right. Yes, I, th you're, I think. Uh, no, I think it's just, uh, no, I think it's just a tra As long as she has, like, velocity in one direction. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So if you're just um, pivoting on that yeah. point. So now she's no longer melee twisting in, in place. Uh, and then while she, while she moves, you can see that uh, her hips are rotating. Um, right now, as an animator, I'd go in and adjust these, these curves. For instance, let's just say this first hit, her right, her hips don't really turn to the right as much as I would want. It almost feels like she's overshooting too mm -hmm. on that, oh, when, when you can start seeing the left side of her chest, or the, the right side of her chest rather. And so what you could do with, the, with this is, uh, let's, where is this primary attack? So this is baked data we got out of Maya, but there's no reason you can't just you know, go through and delete a lot of these keys and just start pushing and pulling yourself. Um, so let's just kind of delete some of this dense data we have here. This is potentially a uh, silly question, but there's a lot of saturation in the preview. Uh, is that just in the scenario? Cause it oh, you mean color, like yeah. lighting saturation? It is. is it's it probably the skin she has selected. You can okay. hold down L and rotate, rotate oh, cool. the light. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that'll work. But what I've done here is now on this, this curve graph, 
I've basically made this into three keys. A little easier to manage? Easier to manage. And you can uh, set these to different kind of curves. So let's go ahead and do user curve here. And we'll set this to user curve. And this, you want to avoid linear curves on this stuff. So let's go ahead and just change them all to, to user. And that way you can kind of pull the tangent handles. And let's look at this animation. What's cool with this is you can look at the animation and adjust your, your twist curve. So right here, let's look at her exactly from the rear view. So right here, you can see her, her hips are heavily rotated towards the left. And now they're basically almost 90 degrees to, to the right. So this is kind of where you eyeball it. And then, and then play it in the game. They're they're asking if there's a way to feed uh, the curves directly into like your animation program or software. There. There. You mean like feed it from say Maya into? Uh, or can you repeat the question? The direct question was how can you feed the curves directly into your animation program? Maybe they can explain a little more? Yeah, if y'all could explain that a little more. We Do you mean like going back to my or Max? Yeah, you can't. So th there's lots of ways to do this curve. So this particular animator wrote a script in Maya that just looked at the delta between the hips and, say, the root bone, and took that value and applied it to the Melee Twist custom curve. Uh, some animators, I like going in and hand king. I like having sparse data and being able to kind of just move this around as I play. So like, for instance, I just modified this. And let's let's take this curve and really, let's let, make it really extreme. Uh, let's go like, let's type a value here of, let's say 120. Right. And now let's play again. So s now she's really twisting when she gets there. And she's also twisting a little late. One thing I will show that you do not have to close out pi when you adjust this curve. So I can pull up, let's say, pull up the animation itself. And let's just put it over here. Let's see if I can get it. I heard pi, so let's talk. Pi. Are we talking 3.14 pi or are we talking like Apple? <laughs> we're, ta we're, we're talking preview and editor. Is that right? Is that what it stands for? Pi? Yes. P preview and editor. All right. All right. Let's see. Here, let me get back to the animation I was looking at. It's primary attack A fast. Let's Guys, I'm trying to keep this all in <laughs> one monitor. It's, it's <laughs> certainly a challenge to be Let's a single Let's play monitor. an editor, not preview an editor. Play an editor, OK. Yeah. It's something, P, something an editor. You think I would know, right? Yeah. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of things to know. Uh, OK. So what's cool is I, I don't have to close out pi. I can you know, swing as I run. And then I can pop over here, and I can say that was a little too extreme. Let's let's tone it down. And I could pop back over here and and do it again. So that makes for some fast iteration. So like even right here, this feels better to me. Like her her hips are kind of traveling more with her. And so that is melee twist. Like, is this clear to most of you guys out there watching this right now? Hopefully. <laughs> I, I learned a lot. It's a pretty simple com um, concept. You're basically just using your strafe set to control your hips. And so that way your hips are going along with the spine again. Um, oh, I think they were clarifying to clarify the question earlier. They're using Max or Akatsu, and they're wondering if they can use a tool to get those curves from the FBX. Uh, so you do not have to. That actu that's actually a really good question. You don't have to get these curves from an animation package. So let's say you're working on animations that no one ever exported a Melee Twist. 
Uh, let's go ahead and recreate one of these. You do not have to have one. So what you can add your own custom curves in UE4. So let's go ahead and on curves, let's add a variable curve. And in this case, we already have melee twist on our list. But if it's not there, you can create curve up here and mm -hmm. type in melee twist. So now I have a melee twist curve, and it's completely blank. And, and as an animator or as a developer, you can just eyeball this. Like if she is facing forward, let's say she's facing forward here. Uh, let me expand this a little more. Her hips to me look, let's just guess that they're about 45, 45 degrees negative. So I could add a key here, and let's make the value negative. 45. If you're working in this, this curve editor, uh, the eyeball will make it bigger. And clicking in it and holding A will expand your, your key, A or F. Um, it will zoom in. So if you only have one key set, like, like now, it will zoom in on that, <laughs> one, that one key. Uh, but it's definitely useful when you have like a series of keys. So let's go ahead and set a key here. Let's add a key. All right. And so let's see. So her her hips are here. And let's go here and say, you know, we I think we found the value we liked around, let's just say it was 70, positive 70. So we type 70 here. Again, I'm going to click in here and hit A. And then you go back in and create your own user, your user curves. So yes, you do not need a software package to define these curves for you. You mm -hmm. can you can add these, which makes makes it really valuable. So they're curious how you called the curve data to use for your melee script. Uh, so the curve data. So we have a we have a basically it's overly simple. Um, let's just add another curve value. Let's call. Let's just add a new curve. Create curve, and let's just call this curve like uh, example curve. Right, and this curve can be used con to control anything. Uh, think of this as just a value you want to ride along with your animation. So you can use this to control morph targets. You can use it to drive any parameter you want. Basically, this is just a float curve value. Like I said, that's timed with your animation. So let's go ahead and add just a few keys to this. Add key, add key. I'm just going to move this, this value around so you guys can see that there's actually something going on on the curve. So now this animation has something called example curve on it. This example curve will get saved to your skeleton. So you guys will see that your skeleton got dirtied. When you see this asterisk, that means the skeleton is modified. Mm -hmm. That means that skeleton now has on its curve list an example curve. So it's very important when you're adding these curves to go ahead and update and save your skeleton. So now we're at the blueprint. And the question was, how do you feed this particular curve into the blueprint? Let's go to our end of blueprint. We have a node that just says get curve value. And that, that is basically it, just get curve value. And you have the node. And all you have to do is just type in the name of your melee, or the, the name of your curve. So what was my curve? Example curve? Yes. So now I have example curve controlling melee twist. Um, you know, so mm -hmm. even though I made like some random curve, uh, that is now controlling my game. So let's so let's just see what that even looks like. So if I go in and play, now I'm playing this arbitrary curve I put in. You know, it's doing something, but uh, <laughs> like I said, so yeah, it's a very simple concept. That was a great question, by the way. Now we go back to melee twist, so it's yeah. Now we're going to melee twist, so we're back to it working the way we want, and. This is definitely a value we, we update a lot as we play the game and get notes from the art director and people call out twist. Um, there's there's still a few things I would do to fix some of these melee moves. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go through all four and polish the mm -hmm. melee curve twist. But you know what that melee curve essentially is doing. If I go back to this example, lower body uh, uh, blend space I made. Essentially, all that curve is doing is kind of just driving, you know, this value here, and that's going to be in sync with, you know, when your your spine twists to the right or left. You now have hips that are twisting with it. 
that don't lie. The hips don't lie. So yeah, it's super cool technique. It definitely improved the look. It got rid of some of that candy wrapping and it made it feel like the, the hips were part of the animation again. How long did it take you guys to, you said you guys kind of had to figure this out, right? Uh, how much time went into? Uh, it, this is one of those where we initially went into the mocap stage to record melee full body of what it would look like if you're running right, left, forward, and just to, and get, swinging to, get, to get coverage, yeah. yeah. And what happened was when you know I had the actor, I was like, all right, now rear back and run towards me. Well, he reared back, and I noticed his feet were just doing a strafe left. And I was like, all right, stop. This is how we're, you know, it was one of those, like, it was just a moment where aha moment. I had to be, like, looking at a mocap actor doing the motion, and it just kind of clicked. Um, oh, that's cool. Then I came back, and I'd say within a day, um, Ray Arnett had set this up first, and he got this in. And that's awesome. Yeah, we've been using it since. Uh, hopefully, it could help some of you folks out, out there who are doing upper body melee stuff. Uh, let's see. So next, what was next on my list? Are there any other questions with this? I would be happy to answer. Um, there's a couple. Uh, someone said they were able to do sort of a melee twist by extracting hip bone rotation right in the animation blueprint. Is it acceptable if he doesn't feel like he needs artistic control? That Absolutely. Um, that is one way to do it, too, is you can just get your, exactly what they were doing in Maya, get the delta between the hips and the root, and use that curve to drive your melee. You don't get any artistic kind of control on it, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely a good way to do it. Cool. And they're also wondering, briefly, like, how do you maintain different animation blueprints for different heroes? Because they said you cannot have anim blueprints inherit from another anim EV. Um, you can, let's see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the thoughts. It, 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 it's a deep question. It's, oh, okay. it's a philosophical question. So yeah, you can have, it, so for Paragon, we had unique blueprints per hero. Uh, but as, if I were to do it again, I think we would probably have maybe four or five unique blueprints and kind of put the characters into more of a class uh, because blueprints are tied to the skeleton. But like I think I mentioned in an earlier stream, skeletons aren't necessarily a skeleton, like a skeletal mesh. It's just a, a set, a bunch of settings for skeletons. Um, so it's, it's a deep question, but I th pretty much you could share this same blueprint with another character as long as they're sharing the same skeleton. There's no reason, mm -hmm. you know, nothing's... And these are all based on the epic skeleton, right? Uh, this is based on a skeleton. Well, uh, for Paragon, each character had its own unique skeleton. Oh, wow. So you had to do a unique for each. And so we had unique blueprints per each one. Wow. However, to like say maintain it, when we started a new hero, we would just retarget. You know, in my very first stream, I showed you guys how to retarget Shinbi mm -hmm. to a new character. That's what we would do, too. We would just retarget the modify. whole thing. We'd get most of the logic and then modify as we need to. Uh, is there any way to read the curve data from a file so that the animation can be modified after the game's packaged? I would imagine. Uh, that's beyond my scope. <laughs> <laughs> it, if you can get, I guess if you could have some kind of listener, you know, feed that variable in, you know, like, uh, let's see, if I go back to the event graph. Yeah, if you have a way for this value, the melee twist, to be updated with something outside. So say you're casting to a, a blueprint that does that live. Yeah, so that's beyond my scope. I'll, <laughs> I'll stop here. <laughs> All right, is that, that it on questions? Awesome, those are great questions. Yeah, we're... Oh, we're getting close yeah. to your time. Man, I'm Technical difficulties. All right. We're just doing this so we, we keep bringing Jay back because everyone loves Jay. <laughs> yes, I really wanted to cover uh, additives day so let's that will definitely take me more than five minutes we have a hard wall today guys sorry unfortunately so i'll be back mm -hmm. sooner than later technical difficulties definitely yeah. uh put a little bit of a damper in our plans <laughs> yeah so i'll be back again and let's do it like whenever these guys have an open spot for me to come i'll come and cover uh, additives yeah but we can do a few more questions in the meantime yeah let's do a few more questions more, uh, to go over some things we can give out more forge arena keys well also this um so, oh. let's see. Um, well, one question was, uh, so most of these blueprints are, these are straight from 
the assets that are available, right? Yes, so currently right now, the only character we've released that has a blueprint, an Anim blueprint, is Shinbi. Her blueprint is very basic, and she doesn't have, say, the strafe system in it. Uh, the blueprint I used today is Shinbi's blueprint. The only thing I did is I added uh, strafing to the blueprint, which I covered in stream part two. Mm -hmm. Let's see. While we're here, I do want to show you guys one thing I did add uh, to, you know, you guys brought up last time, can you add leans to the blend space? And I went ahead and did that. So for my run blend space, I created a, a 2D blend space. So if we open it, I have the directional runs, but also have the leans on the other axis. So I have 45. Oh, cool. Um, so we have basically jog circle left is at the top and right is at the bottom for the lean direction, and then you have your running your directions on the, on the horizontal bar. So now when we play, this added so much, by the way, uh, adding leans back into a strafe, is it, what's cool is like you get a lean, but if you really crank it, you start playing a strafe, you know, left or right as well, and it really gets... Oh, so the logic bad. starts going, hey, let's yeah. play this this animation instead, and it seems really fluid. Yeah, so it, just, it adds a lot. Uh, in this example, I took out the start and stops just so we have a yeah. pretty clean way to get the, get to the melee. I see what you mean about the when we were talking the other day in the hall about Ragdoll mm -hmm. with the, the, the dangly bits. Yes. Like with her, uh, I don't know, dress piece. That's, that's one good tip for animation is anytime you're designing a character for a game, the more dangly bits you have, the more fluid your animation is going to feel to the average consumer. Like, they're just going to think the animation's even better. Because the, everything's happening. Because animation pops. You know, no matter what, you're always going to get some weird kind of thing. But physics and, and cloth are always smoothing out all those transitions. Yeah, that's so. awesome. Um, and then there's, do we have inf any information on the um, new nodes or Paragon animation system? There is no new information. We still plan on getting those out. Mm -hmm. We have prioritized that to some degree. I just don't have new information on, on a date. Yeah. But those are definitely still in the works, and I cannot wait. <laughs> Sounds like there's a lot of really amazing stuff coming. It's Once amazing stuff, and it, it really is, you know, for those who want the turn in place, there's just a turn in place node that does it. It just works. Uh, a lot of the stuff gets even more simplified with these new nodes, and they're coming. Um, well, I think we're about wrapped up for today. Do Pizza. toss your questions in the forum post. I know some of you tossed them in there regarding the, like, 90-degree turn. I think we just discussed getting to that in a future stream. Mm -hmm. um, and then in addition to hopping on these additive ones that we unfortunately couldn't yeah. get to today. We'll do mm -hmm. additives. I'm going to cover. There's definitely some um, uh, just iteration speed stuff I want to cover. And I will show, even though we do have a really nice, sexy node coming for t the turn in place, I'll go ahead and show how we do it, where you can basically rotate to 90 degrees, use the aim offset, but once you hit that threshold, it'll play a turn in place animation. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and cover that on a future stream. Uh, somebody wants to know if dangly bits is a professional term. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Awesome. Moving on. <laughs> Thank you, Bits. Um, we can't end on that. <laughs> <laughs> I just tossed in a survey into the chat. Please fill that out. I know a lot of you come asking for questions or topics regarding future streams. This is a great place um, for me to centralize a lot of that lo uh, information and share it. So if you drop in there, let us know how the streams are going, what you would like to see from future streams, and just general feedback. We always appreciate that. Um, also, always check for your local UE4 meetups. If you go to meetup.com slash pro slash Unreal Engine, there are 130 groups that you could be a part of, and if there's not one near you, you can start one. Um, Gosh, there was we just there was eight recently that started up. Uh, it feels like it, yeah. Yeah, so they're they're popping up all over the place. So get super get involved. They're super fun. Uh, it's a great way to learn. Yeah. Meet local devs. Maybe yep. meet someone to get a job. You never know. Networking. Um, submit your projects to the NVIDIA Edge program. We like handing out swanky hardware, and you could be the recipient of that. So make sure to share those projects with us. Um, also, if you'd like our countdown where there's a speed development, let us know what you're working on. 
We'd love to see those. Submit them to community at unrealengine.com. And it's just, we're looking for five minutes of just rapid yep. development in video form. Need your logo and things like that. This was actually a new one. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is the floppy and the sleepy planet. Uh, yeah. So uh, they, they're really awesome. They're, they were actually streaming one day. The Brad so, Strokes team. Yep. So if you guys are if you guys are working on stuff and developing, highly recommend you do it uh, do it live, do it on Twitch because we're always hanging out and looking for that kind of stuff. So we may pop in and say hello. Yeah, and so. follow us on all the social things. All the and stuff. And we'll bring Jay back soon. <laughs> I'll be Thank back. you so much for joining. <laughs> All, All right. right. Have Bye. a great week, Take everyone. care, guys.